glossaries, data catalogs. If you're like me, you've probably heard these terms used interchangeably all the time. So what are the differences, the similarities? What's the overlap? By the end of this video, hopefully we can shed some light on just that. Stay tuned. First up, let's start with some definitions. What is a data catalog? Um, a data catalog will be that workplace that serves as a point of context, a point of control, uh, a point of collaboration, and ultimately the place where you can build this action plan to manage and integrate your entire data state across diverse assets for diverse users and ultimately support a variety of use cases. So what are some of the key features of a data catalog? Well, key features should enable things like data discovery, they should be able to capture things like lineage across your data sources, uh, enable collaboration across data teams, and maybe even provide access control capabilities to the sources themselves. Let's double click on these a little bit further. When it comes to data discovery, this is simply allowing your users to be able to search and find the relevant data assets that they're looking for or that they need for a particular use case, whether it's searching by names and descriptions or keywords, tags, data types, or any other kind of metadata. This should be within the catalog so users can explore it and discover the information that they need. Data lineage, you know, modern data catalogs, I think this is where we separate traditional and modern catalogs, provide you with more automated visual maps of lineage. So how data actually flows throughout your data ecosystem. So you can trace where it comes from, the transformations that happen to it, and ultimately where it's utilized throughout the life cycle of this data. Collaboration is talked about in a lot of different tools across data and analytics. When it comes to data catalogs, this is really, like I said before, more of the workplace concept of how can we weave together the daily workflows of different personas across data teams into more of this simplified data sharing, data monitoring, or, or access um, through one tool that could be a data catalog. And lastly, when we talk about access control, we could talk about this in two different ways. One could be the data itself, actually providing the authority or authorization to access and query and use underlying data, but also metadata. The more metadata that a modern data catalog is collecting means that we might want to hide or only expose certain metadata to particular users. So access control applies both to data and metadata. All right. So onto glossaries. A data glossary or a business glossary, probably more commonly referred to, is the user-friendly element uh, of defining the data within your organization. So this would actually contain the business terminology of what particular columns and calculations actually mean. This is to help other business stakeholders whenever they have questions about what does the data mean? We can establish more of this common understanding of the terms and, and concepts across your data estate. So we're building these taxonomies and these ontologies so we can then ultimately use them to communicate and promote more of this semantic consistency across our projects and across our teams. Glossaries will include a few different things. They'll usually have the business definition or the definition of the term. They'll have synonyms that could possibly be used in a different way, but for a similar definition. Uh, and they'll also have just the stakeholder who may own that particular terminology or just be the point of contact for actually telling someone, what does that kind of mean? These business definitions or the definition of terms are the clear, concise explanation of what that term actually means with respect to the business. It should probably include, like I mentioned, synonyms or, you know, very common, we have a book of acronyms within organizations that have to be defined. So what do those abbreviations or those acronyms, those terms uh, actually mean and how can we make them easier to discover within something like a glossary? And lastly, I talked about stakeholder ownership, right? How can we identify the individuals that are actually responsible for maintaining and upkeeping those definitions that are stored within the glossary? And this is so we can ensure the accuracy and consistency of how these are utilized over time, and more importantly, across teams. But wait, are these things really that different then? Let's figure it out by exploring a few other factors. Now, let's think about these concepts with respect to three different categories, right? Let's think about the scope. Let's think about the audience that they're typically associated with and ultimately the purpose. So number one, let's talk about scope. A data dictionary is going to focus more on that technical detail about a database or a system. 
a glossary is going to focus more on the business terminology associated with data sets. And the catalog really focuses on using information from both of these to make information more searchable or more understandable for different types of users. So fun fact, if you're working with a modern data cataloging tool like Atlan, you should be getting the benefits of both a business glossary as well as a data dictionary and even more types of metadata that aren't being discussed right now. So number two, let's talk about the audiences. Well, we have the glossary, right? It's the business terminology. Mm -hmm. And so we need more than likely non-technical stakeholders or owners within the business to actually tell us how that information is being used and create those business definitions. A data catalog should be able to bridge that gap between the technical and non-technical stakeholders. We need to understand not only the business definition, but where that data asset may live. And so a catalog can provide that common ground for both of these types of stakeholders to live and collaborate and work in their day-to-day -day lives. Number three, the purposes of these different concepts. Well, on the glossary side of things, it's meant to ensure that semantic integrity. Are we all using terminology in the same way? And more importantly, when we build analysis on top of data, are we interpreting a particular column or table in the right way? Now, a data catalog, again, blends these two concepts because rarely whenever we're starting a new project or tackling a new use case, do we only need business details or we only need technical details? At some point, both of these personas, both of these uses will arise, and that's where a data catalog can help both teams access them in a similar place. Now let's actually double click into how they relate to data and analytics governance within your organization. Now, there are many ways that these components can enable an effective data and analytics governance strategy. Uh, we'll talk about four of them today. The first one being collaboration. We're going to talk about how it can help with automation. We can talk about how it's going to help with data stewardship and ownership, and ultimately how it's going to help with onboarding and training of new employees or new users within the systems. First, let's talk about collaboration. Well, these concepts really enable a collaborative governance environment because there's so many different types of stakeholders involved in data and analytics today whether it's your engineers, your developers, your analysts, your analytics engineers, BI developers, what have you, right? There's such a mix of technical and non-technical stakeholders that there needs to be a place for these roles to live and collaborate uh, on different projects and use cases. Secondly is automation. Now, our organizations are dealing with more and more data and more and more use cases than ever before. And so in order to scale any type of governance program, we need to enable and focus on automation. Data catalogs, data dictionaries, business glossaries, we can utilize the metadata that these tools have to ultimately automate different flows to update a lot of these features. You know, so you don't have to revert back to manually maintaining Excel files for your data dictionaries and your glossaries. Third, let's talk about stewardship and ownership. Uh, I heard a great quote by someone that sort of said, tools like Atlin give governance uh, a face. And I really like this because if you think about what other personas across the data and analytics ecosystem are able to work with, your analysts have BI tools, right? There's something very closely associated with it. Your data engineers have ETL and orchestration and data warehousing tools that they can associate with their role. When it comes to governance, I think we all acknowledge it's extremely important. But data catalogs and glossaries and dictionaries are really where these things manifest in terms of technology. And so when it comes to being a data steward or owning data, you now have a way to ultimately bring that to life and have a place where these ownership policies and access policies can be stored and managed and updated. Finally, training and education. Whether you're starting a new governance program or you're onboarding a new user to your existing program, they're typically going to start from something like a data catalog, a business glossary, or data dictionary to really understand what's available within the data state and what new use cases you can pursue. So focus on utilizing these concepts anytime you're starting a new workshop or hosting a webinar or whatever may enable a new user within your data and analytics ecosystem. In a nutshell, data dictionaries, glossaries, and data catalogs all help to enable your data governance strategy. 
And when you're utilizing all three of them together effectively in something like a modern data catalog, you're able to achieve better data quality and consistency. You're able to enable data discovery across your data estate and ultimately enhance this communication and collaboration amongst the personas within your data and analytics org. That's all for this video on business glossaries and data catalogs. Hopefully you have a better understanding of how the three are utilized and ultimately how they probably are fitting together in a modern data catalog like Atlas. If you're evaluating modern data catalogs and want to know how they can help enable your data governance strategies, be sure to click the link to our guided demos in the description below. Thanks again for watching. If you like this video, please click the like button and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. If you have any questions or just want to share your thoughts about Atlin, leave them in the comments below. I'll see you all soon in the next one. Thanks. Bye.